My name is Denise Coe Genovese, Associate Editor at Unquote, and I'm here in Cannes at the IPEM Private Equity Conference with Helen Steers, partner and head of primary investments at Pantheon. She's also a member of the International Investment Committee. Helen, thanks so much for coming. Denise, it's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. I understand that you've been asked to give a panel session, lead a session entitled, Where Are All the Women in Private Equity? What are the key things that you'd like people to take away from that panel? Well, first of all, I think it's great that at IPEM we're having this sort of a discussion because I really think that we need to get this conversation and this topic out um, into the open and we need to talk about it in big, you know, big forums like this. Um, so I think the panel discussion should be very interesting. And what I'm hoping that we'll discuss is, you know, is the pipeline of women coming into private equity and then the retention of those women, the support of those women, because it's not just trying to get more women to think about private equity as a career, and it is a fantastic career for a woman, but also to try and stop them dropping out halfway through, mm. to get them to, to go through the senior ranks yeah. um, and to have you know, a really fulfilling career in private equity. And what would you say to women? What, why is it a fantastic career? So I've spent almost the whole of my career in private mm. equity. I actually started out as an engineer, okay. and I can tell you that the, <laughs> actually the male-female balance in yeah. engineering is even worse than in private equity, which is, is kind of saying something. But I think that private equity is actually an ideal job for a, for a woman. It combines you know, all sorts of different skills. You need to have quantitative skills, qualitative skills, relationship building skills, but you've also got to be highly analytical and detail, you know, managing lots, lots of projects at the same time. Women are great at multitasking, yeah. not to sort of, <laughs> not to sort of generalize. But um, so I think it's a great opportunity um, for a woman. I think it's, a, it's an industry where it's quite difficult to get, to get bored. You know, you're continuously meeting interesting people, you know, you're investing in, in high growth, exciting businesses. Um, so I would encourage women to think about it as a career. Um, but obviously there have been challenges along the way. What would you say for you personally have been some of the key um, obstacles? I've been very fortunate actually because I was able to um, find great mentors and sponsors very early on in my career and I was given great opportunities. I think part of the problem for women is that you know, they come into this industry and maybe they don't push themselves forward enough to get onto the right projects, the right deal teams. Um, and you do have to sort of forge your way a little bit in this industry. Um, also, most of the firms that operate are quite small. Um, they, don't have, um, they don't have mentoring systems. It's quite difficult actually to, to find somebody that's going to help you uh, manage your career. So you end up having to manage your career yourself, okay. um, which is it's sort of what I, what I had to do really. Um, and talking about um, mentoring, um, you are one of the founding members of Level 20. Um, and can I just ask you, we're in 2020 now, <laughs> and I know that the hope had been a few years ago that by this year we may have seen, we'd hope to see more women on mm. boards, more women in um, the workplace, mm. private equity mm. in general. What, in your mind, are the key obstacles that have stopped yeah. us um, seeing that seeing change, that. yeah, it's a great question, Denise. And you know, I sort of ask myself that question, yeah. you know, nearly nearly every day. I mean, we we founded Level Twenty um, because we could see this crying need, um, you know, for an organisation that would help encourage more women to come into the uh, into the industry to support and retain those um, those women. And you know, at the time, we did some research. You know, this is way back in 2015 now, and I think we found that in terms of senior positions in private equity, senior roles um, only only. 6% of senior roles are held by women. And you're absolutely right, that has not progressed too much by 2020. Um, but we've got a lot of initiatives um, on the way. You know, um, I think one of the biggest things that I'm proud of is our mentoring program, actually. Um, so we now mentor, we have 60 mentor-mentee pairs per year. We've now extended the mentoring program um, into the rest of Europe. So as you know, it started in the UK, but we're now present in 11 other countries. We've got mentoring programs running in, in a number of those as well. And that really helps sort of the next stage. It's not just about encouraging more women to come into the industry, but it's also about retaining and supporting those women. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, most firms in private equity are too small to have their own mentoring programs. So having an industry-wide mentoring program is incredibly helpful. And it means that women can get some ad advice and some help, some support um, outside of their normal sort of reporting you know, relationships, yeah. which, is, which is great. So you know, in terms of where we are, um, 
you, you know, we're not we're not at the level we'd like to yeah. be at, clearly. Um, but the important thing is that the debate is taking mm -hmm. place. Um, we have a huge amount of support from most of the largest private equity firms in the industry. So. Um, We've now got almost 50 sponsors at Level 20. Those sponsors are incredibly engaged um, and they're helping supply mentors for the mentoring program. They're helping with the dialogues, they're helping run internships, getting more women to, to, to consider private equity as a career. And I think crucially as well, what's really interesting is a lot of them have got incredibly active recruitment programs and many of them are recruiting more than 50% women right, yeah. into that early yeah. Um, yeah. level, which is really you know the, yeah. the, the start of the funnel. Yeah, um, and you talked earlier a bit about how um, attracting talent to private equity was actually a discourse that transcends gender. It Say does. Say a bit about that. Yeah, I think, you know, nowadays, you know, let's face it, you know, with the millennial generation, um, People are looking for a little bit, a little bit more. They're not just sort of chained to their desks. And in, in fact, we don't need to be chained at our desks anymore. We're flexible working. Mm. You know, with video, you know, video conferencing as well. We travel. We should travel a little bit less. You know, we have to think about the climate yeah. in all of this too. And millennials have um, a whole set of different objectives and, and ideas. We see this at, at Pantheon. You know, with the people that we interview, the people that come in, that we recruit, um, they're interested in developing, you know, other sides of their of their of their work, their family life, their interests, their passions. And I think that in general, industry and that includes private equity needs to be able to take account of this because otherwise, the brightest and the best candidates won't go into private equity. They'll go off and start their own businesses. They'll become entrepreneurs, and we will miss out on that wave of talent. So we need to have the right sort of conditions for those people to feel good about being in private equity. In the private equity industry though, Pantheon seems to be quite an exception. You're quite high up, very high up, and there are other women as well up mm. there with you. What's different about your firm? It's a great question. And actually, you know, we are quite exceptional. If you look right across the firm, um, over 40% of senior roles, and that includes investment roles, mm. crucially, um, are held by, held by women. But we've got women very high up in terms of, you know, so head of business development, but also head of legal tax, you know, head of, head of Europe, head of the US, um, you know, head of infrastructure. So it, it just seems to be one of those things that, that has happened over the years. It's not something that's happened in the last five years. No. And I put it down to the culture at Pantheon, yeah. which is very very diverse, not just in terms of gender, but also in terms of sort of, you know, racial background, yeah. social background. And I think, um, you know, one of the things I always like to say is that, you know, if you all look the same, then you're very much in danger of groupthink. So the fact that we are so diverse at Pantheon, I actually think is a great benefit for our yeah. clients, for our investment process and ultimately our clients, because we all come at things from slightly different yeah. angles. Now, why are we so diverse? It probably comes back to the fact that, you know, when we were founded, we were founded by three people, one woman and two men. Okay. So we were one third yeah. senior female yeah. right from the beginning. Um, and then all along the way, um, women have been been able to progress um, at Pantheon yeah. and, and reach those senior positions. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a real encouragement, isn't it? Because sometimes mm. we feel frustrated that things don't happen overnight. But I think if we put, you know, like Level 20 and other um, organizations in place now that, you know, through the years, yes. um, we will start to see like proper, proper change. Yes, yeah, a long process, but we shouldn't give up. Things are, good things are definitely happening. And we just have to be um, uh, very, um, very focused on it, yeah, I think. Great. Helen Steers, thank you very much. Denise, thank you very much. <laughs>